Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House up in Maine taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming Fall of 2017 firearms auction. And today we're taking a look at a secondary Marshall military revolver, which is to say a gun that saw service in the Civil War but was not formally adopted by the Union, or I suppose Confederate, governments. This is a Butterfield revolver. It is a five-shot, uh, 41 caliber revolver, brass framed as you can see, and uh, with a seven and a half inch barrel. This was patented by a guy named Jesse, predictably Butterfield, uh, out of Philadelphia in 1855. And what is unusual about it is that it is actually not designed to use standard percussion caps. Instead, Butterfield set it up with his own patented uh, pellet or wafer primer system. And he has a magazine of primers in the frame of the gun and when you cock and fire the gun, it automatically feeds those primer pellets out right above the, uh, the percussion cap nipples, hammer hits them, detonates, and the idea is this saves you the time and effort of having to actually cap each individual cylinder uh, after you've loaded the gun. The other advantage here is if you have primer pellets like this, you don't have to deal with spent caps. Sometimes when you fire a cap and ball revolver, the, the cap basically just blows off nicely and you never see it again and you don't have to worry about it. But sometimes it's possible for that spent cap to get stuck on the, the nipple or for it to fall down and get lodged in the, the action somewhere and jam up the gun. This is something that revolver designers had to work around. Well, if you had just a pellet primer, there's nothing left. It's kind of the cap and ball equivalent of caseless ammunition. It explodes and then it's just gone. The downside is, actually kind of like caseless ammunition, those uh, primer pellets are a lot more fragile than a percussion cap that's encased in this metal cup. So you have to treat them more gently, they're not waterproof in any way, that sort of thing. Just right off the bat, it's a cool looking revolver. The brass frame is nice, and it's one of those neat ones that's kind of an inline design with the grip behind the cylinder instead of dropping down below the cylinder like a Colt pattern revolver. That's neat. Uh, and then we have a couple little markings on here. The main one is here on the top strap, Mark Butterfield's patent, uh, December 11th, 1855, and an abbreviation for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this particular one is serial number 334, so you'll see that on the, the bottom of the grip, on the loading lever, and on the barrel there. It's also inside the gun in a couple places, which we'll see in a minute. Now this is a single action revolver, so you do have to manually cock it, and then you can fire. Now despite the primer pellet system, it looks to me like you could use standard percussion caps on this if you wanted to, or if you ran out of uh, Butterfield's proprietary patented pellets, uh, and that's probably a good idea to make, it, to make that possible. But the cool part is that pellet feeding system. So. So we'll start here. This is the magazine tube for the pellets, which I can unscrew from the bottom of the frame. Pull that out. And there it is. We have a uh, little spring in there. It's just a tubular magazine. You can push that follower down and lock it in place and then load it up with pellets. Once you've got that full, you would then insert it in with the follower still locked. And then you can rotate this you may have heard it snap there. That will release the spring and it will push the pellets up, but they will be contained inside this tube so they won't go flying all over the place. And then you just screw this back down nice and tight, like so. Then you're ready for some actual shooting. So when we cock the, the hammer, we have a setup like this. And then as the hammer drops, this little flat bar comes out and that would be holding a primer pellet in it. The hammer is going to come down right through the center of that. It's going to take that primer pellet and slam it right into the top surface of the nipple there, which will then explode and the fire will go through the priming hole into the cylinder and set off your charge. The priming system is improved to be quick and easy. The rest of the loading procedure is just like any other cap and ball revolver. Put the hammer at half cock and then you have a loading lever. Line that up like so, to load powder and ball into each chamber. The sight picture on this is, like many guns of the time, remarkably tiny. There's our front sight, and then the rear sight you actually have to look underneath the hammer. 
So your sight picture is that. The rear sight notch is right there. It is really tiny, right there in front of where the hammer falls. So there you go. There's the rear sight notch. Lines up like so. Very, very tiny sight picture. And as with many percussion guns, it is completely blocked when the hammer's down. So very obvious when the gun's not cocked and not ready to fire. I can show you the inner workings here. I have loosened this grip screw so that will come off. Gently coax the grip off there. I mentioned the uh, serial number being on the inside. There's a uh, 334 there. I can take this brass side plate. There are two of these, obviously, one on each side, and they're cast, a 34 on that as well. So there's the boring side of the frame. We have the axis for the hammer, and then we have this big flat spring that uh, compresses to give the hammer, to motivate the hammer, as they would say. We can pull off the grip on this side as well. So we have some more 334s and 34s. There's the rest of the internal mechanism. This piece right here is the hand. That's what's going to reach through the back of the frame there, and it's responsible for both turning the cylinder when you cock the hammer and locking the cylinder when the hammer is cocked. And then there's one other thing. I can take out this screw and show you a little bit more. So under this plate is that uh, primer pushing arm. All right, so this cover comes off. So that empty hole right there is the percussion cap, where the percussion cap magazine goes. With it in place, you can see the percussion cap follower right there. And then we have this metal sheet that is going to take the top cap, the top uh, pellet right there, and slide it forward when you fire, like so. That piece is connected via this screw to the hammer. So that's what, what pulls it back and forth in conjunction with the hammer. Percussion revolvers are always pretty mechanically simple. There's not a whole lot going on, and that makes them really interesting to look at. In 1861, Jesse Butterfield got himself a contract to make no less than 2,300 of these revolvers for the Ira Harris Guards. This was a New York volunteer unit. Uh, in fact, they were later renamed the 5th and 6th New York Volunteer Infantry. However, something happened. Probably the money ran out, but I don't have any actual data. And the contract was terminated early, and they only actually made 640 of these. The first 590 are just like this one, and the last 50 of the guns, presumably the ones that they just kind of pushed out the door when the money ran out, uh, the last 50 have no markings on them at all. So uh, it is a cool and rarely seen example of a uh, secondary U.S. Marshall revolver and a really cool addition to any cap and ball revolver collection. So if that sounds like something that you would like to have, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to James Julia's catalog page on this guy, and you can take a look at their high-res pictures, their description, provenance, etc. And if you're interested, well, you can place a bid over the phone, over the web, or come here and participate live in the auction. Thanks for watching.